there is some strange stuff happening in the world right now. Let's watch. I'm telling y'all, they always hide the truth in plain sight. Sure is. Make a deal with me, kid. You can have the car and everything that goes along with it. I'll do it. That's a Freemason sign ring. And, wait a minute, that's obviously the devil. Like he said, no big deal, just hiding the truth in plain sight. That's supposed to be a Mercedes-Benz car ad? That kind of explains something. I I'm wondering, there's been an uptick in Mercedes-Benz sales here in Atlanta specifically. It's like so many people that I know either won a Mercedes-Benz or own a Mercedes-Benz. What's the hype over Mercedes-Benz? Why is everybody buying them? Because people think it's going to make them look like they're part of the upper echelon. Not. Want to know what you missed? Well, you're distracted by Jeffrey Epstein documents and G-Side in the Middle East and aliens in Miami. One of the world's most infamous conspiracy theories? Stop being a theory. And I am talking about the McDonald's ice cream conspiracy. And oh boy, is it bigger and more sinister than you might think. And this case is direct evidence, proof even, that corporations engage in conspiracies for their benefit against us. And this one's fun and it's spicy. So I'm going to briefly catch you up on the basics of the McDonald's ice cream conspiracy theory. And then I'm going to fill you in on the new lawsuit that sheds light on what's really going on. And this one goes right to the top, to emails sent by CEOs. So I'm sure you know that McDonald's is famous for having their ice cream machines down all the time. And it became so common throughout the 2010s that it became a meme. Mainstream news outlets started reporting on it and people all over the internet started speculating on it. See, McDonald's ice cream maker is made by this company called Taylor, who's been making McDonald's equipment since McDonald's was founded. And if you own a McDonald's, you are required to use this ice cream machine. Johnny Harris made a great video about this a couple of years ago. Highly recommend you watch it and it'll catch you up to speed to this new lawsuit that just came out right at the end of last year. And when Johnny read through all those service manuals, he read through a bunch of the financials, he discovered something interesting. In 2017, Taylor claimed that 25% of their revenues comes from recurring service, i.e. fixing the machines. According to the stats in this report, that'd be $78.75 million a year. But in another report from the company, he found them claiming that actually they make $170 million a year just from maintenance and repair. The entire business model of this company is to put out a faulty product that franchisees are required to use and then to charge hefty fees to repair it constantly. But that is just the start of this. Because a startup named Kitch actually designed a product that you can plug into this ice cream machine and it will hack the ice cream machine's computers and fix the problems for you. It connects to a phone app so you don't have to deal with their stupid little screen and you can see exactly what's wrong and fix it without calling the repairman. And you can imagine how Taylor felt about that. And this is where we go into straight up conspiracies. Not conspiracy theories. I'm about to read from court documents. So here's a lawsuit filed in 2021 where Kitsch sued this dude who's a McDonald's franchise owner and laid out the dirt. This case is about corporate espionage and the extreme steps one manufacturer, Taylor, has taken to conceal and, pro and protect a multi-million dollar repair racket. Kitsch soon uncovered a repair racket whereby Taylor designed flawed code that caused the machines to malfunction. So Kitsch designed this revolutionary ne new technology that would fix this problem and it was worth millions of dollars and they had to test it out on actual McDonald's machines. 
but they knew that various companies would try to steal their data. So they created a whole bunch of legal firewalls and NDAs and were very careful about who got their hands on this new Kitsch product. And it was for good reason, because Taylor tried to steal it three times. First, one of Taylor's distribution managers tried to purchase a device, but Kitsch's security protocol flagged and blocked the purchase. Then, a lawyer employed by Taylor's outside counsel attempted to purchase the Kitsch solution. Kitsch blocked the second attempt. After that, two private investigators associated with Taylor used aliases and dummy email addresses to get their hands on the device. Once again, Kitsch canceled the orders. They literally hired corporate spies to use fake names to try to get their hands on this software. Oh my God. They could have produced, Taylor could have produced a product that had little to no malfunctions. But they purposely produced products that they knew that because these franchises were required to use, let's give them a product that they have to continue to get repaired over and over and over so that we can continue to rack in the big bucks from this multi-billion dollar company, McDonald's. Oh, we can make a couple of hundred million a year off of them. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Sounds like a great idea. Oh my God. Well, in the meantime, us, us people, we the people, we, we go to McDonald's. We can't get our ice cream or McFlurry because the machine's down. And it was only because of greedy mouths wanted to make more money. That's fucked up. And when all of that didn't work, they found a McDonald's franchise owner to collaborate and collude with. Everything changed after Tyler Gamble, a major McDonald's franchise and leader of the group that works to introduce new products into McDonald's restaurants, enrolled in the Kitsch trial. Gamble approached Kitsch and explained that he was the head of McDonald's equipment team. And at first, Gamble appeared to support Kitsch's mission. Kitsch is informed and believes that this was a ruse. Now we get to the parts of these documents from the court that are fully redacted. Like I spent the first month of 2024 reading Jeffrey Epstein documents and McDonald's documents are just as redacted. I think this is because it's proprietary information about Kitsch's software inside of here. But anyways, back to this franchise owner, Gamble, who got into the Kitsch trial and got his hands on one of their machines and then started using it in conjunction with Taylor of the company to reverse engineer their technology and to make their own product. During the case of Discovery, Kitsch later examined that machine and discovered that Gamble's Brownsville device was connected to the internet. Again, if they had taken it off the internet for a long time to do things to it, who knows? And when it connected back to the internet in 2021, its SD card was 90% full. The device log indicated that someone had been accessing the Kitsch Solutions device, and the device had been powered on and used for weeks after going offline. However, according to the device log, the cables were disconnected periodically, so the device could not retrieve information or connect to the internet, i.e. they took this device by stealing it from the trial, and then they unplugged it from the internet so it couldn't tell Kitsch what they were doing, and then they worked on it in secret to try to reverse engineer it. And then lo and behold, a new product hit the market from Powerhouse Dynamics that was basically an exact replica of Kitsch, but not as good. And surprise, surprise, Powerhouse Dynamics is owned by Middleby Corporation, the same company that owns Taylor. You know, this Taylor that makes the ice cream machines? Probably just a coincidence. And now we're caught up to what just happened. But what's the new scoop, you ask? See, back when Kitsch was gaining traction, right before their trials got infiltrated, McDonald's had sent out this email warning franchise owners not to use Kitsch because it wasn't safe. This was the email where they threatened to void all warranties if you used a Kitsch device. They said that it was allegedly really, really dangerous and it's going to turn on while you're repairing it and it'll rip your hands to pieces. Despite nice. the machine itself having fail safes in place to not allow nice. it to turn on when it's open for repair. And then in all bold, they said, as such, McDonald's strongly recommends that you remove the Kitsch device from any machines and discontinue all use and it's reminding you, da 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 you get the point. But as it turns out, they uncovered an email from the CEO of the Taylor parent company, Middleby, the guy in charge, that was straight up mafia code language for someone killed this product. Quote, not sure if there's anything we can do to slow up the franchise community on the other solution, i.e. Kitsch. Not sure what communications from either McD or Mid can or will go out. Like, who knows? Like, maybe it would be a shame if something happened to the other solution. And just about two weeks after he sent that email out, Donald sent out this email. This is the guy, the CEO of Middlebury, Middleby, Dingleberry, I don't know the name, whatever the name of the company is. 
He gets paid nine and a half million dollars a year as the CEO. And it's looking like Kitsch might win their $900 million lawsuit against McDonald's because they collaborated with this scumbag at the expense of all the franchise owners to the tune of millions of dollars of repair money every year, to the tune of an average of 15% of all McDonald's ice cream machines being out at any given time. Again, is this a deep conspiracy? Is there like secret backdoor deals going on? No. See, Johnny Harris and a lot of other mainstream journalists love to do this thing where they show you every part of a conspiracy theory, and then they try to be like, see, it's not a conspiracy. It's just normal business. But actually, Johnny, it's looking like there are secret backdoor deals going on. Right. And actually, this is the definition of a conspiracy. Exactly. This is called corporate espionage, and it's a tactic regularly engaged in to take out competitors, to monopolize markets, and to screw everyone over for the corporation to make more money. So, just one more reason not to buy McDonald's. <laughs> Yo! I'll never be able to pull up at a McDonald's again and order a Sunday or ice cream cone and they say the machines is down. Talk about I'm going to laugh so hard because I know the truth now. And these organizations, these corporations, they don't like it. And TikTok is the home of the truth. <laughs> I got this note on TikTok literally five minutes before filming this video. Look what it says. So y'all check this out. I was scrolling through TikTok looking for the content that we are consuming right now and I come across this. It says, whatever Congress calls it, the TikTok ban is a TikTok ban. Senator Raquel Warnock would decide rather to give the president new power to take away your constitutional right to access TikTok. The bill will threaten the Georgia small businesses that use TikTok to bring 750 million to the state economy. Tell Senator Warnick why you love TikTok and oppose any bill that includes a TikTok ban. And please be respectful. And then they have a number down here at the bottom where we can call to fight against the TikTok ban. Now, I was having a conversation last night with a friend and we're unanimous. We feel as though this TikTok ban is in some way taking away our constitutional right. Because TikTok is one of those platforms where we have more freedom of speech than we do on other platforms, right? TikTok is a place where a lot of truth is released and is released at a rapid rate where people can get information far quicker than they can change the narrative. Even if China was against us because they don't like us and they're trying to do something to harm us, what they're doing is also benefiting us. What do I mean by that? If they can get the people or help people over here in the states to wake up to what is going on what is happening to us by our own government then we can fight against it but the powers that be don't want that to be but i feel like tiktok needs to stay or else how would i known about the whole freaking ice cream thing and why the machines actually be down at mcdonald's now i'm about to go to mcdonald's after this and find out if i give me an ice cream or not because if i can't i know the truth Man, you see this Mark Zuckerberg building this $270 million bunker? If you have a billion dollars, we have learned that you can do whatever you want to do. When Elon Musk wants to send space things in space, you don't have to ask nobody's permission. Congress don't meet. Senate don't meet. No police department got to be warned. He don't need a permit. None of that. If you got a billion dollars, you do what you want to do, and then you tell them what you did. Hey, and that's how it goes. What he built on the bunker, a two hundred seventy million dollar bunker? What do you know that we don't know, Cat? Kim Jong Un. <laughs> what? I don't know what you don't know. Do you understand that people that are not very bright are in charge of nuclear bombs all across the country? Mm-hmm. That's what he knows. He knows that. 30% of all weapon systems are running off regular Wi-Fi. So what does that mean? That means if a solar flare or a meteor hits either one of those, literally a bomb can go off just because the system accidentally got turned off. Yeah, that's what he knows. The, the people that are in power know that the people that are running the most complicated and deadliest things on the planet 
are just an average idiot. And you know lots of idiots. I do. He couldn't be more right. If you look at the chart over the last few decades of the IQ levels of people, IQ levels have been constantly dropping, going down over the last couple of years, over the last couple of decades. Like he said, certain people in certain positions used to be smart, but not so much now. It's not even a full requirement. It's just who you know. You heard what happened like recently, just two weeks ago, over 10 billionaires have bought bunkers. Mark Zuckerberg is building like a huge bunker right now in Hawaii. With like 10 floors, right? Crazy I amounts of that. floors yeah, and shit. Yeah. And apparently like he's making it so big that it's pretty much a, a civilization. What? Why he needed to be so big? I mean, he, look, he don't want to be alone, I guess. But 10 billionaires buying bunkers? They know something, y'all. They know something, and they gonna be a okay in they bunkers, living their lives away. Yeah, like you can live there with like a few different people, like a almost a few different household. And the, this this is what they say: people had to sign NDAs to work on his bunker. And one of the things that got leaked out was they put cars underneath. But why? why? So this is my theory. This is my theory. Okay. What if all of these billionaires they've built like their underground bunker city, and then they have like a highway that can connect to everybody all around so they still have access to each other because imagine if you're homies and you have all the money in the world bro if i build my bunker I'm gonna i must know you you build yours yeah, I, yeah. we might as well be able to connect to <laughs> shit you know <laughs> and like since the the gas and stuff might be thing tesla is going to become really popular too maybe that's why elon created the first tesla because he knew if this shit ever happens mm. what are people going to buy first the first thing that we can repair by ourselves doesn't need a lot of gas we can go true Nah, see, look, if these billionaires over here making bunkers, I, I just need one of them to watch my channel and enjoy my content enough to invite me to come live with them. If they need me to make them laugh, I'll do it. I will do it. I'll just make them laugh all day long. Just, just keep me alive. I'm a retired FBI agent, and this is a conspiracy theory that keeps me up at night. In 2018, a treasure hunter tipped off the FBI to a large cache of buried, stolen Civil War gold in a rural part of Elk County, Pennsylvania. Now, the story goes, this treasure hunter had been looking into this since around 2011, probably further back than that. But his research showed that during the Civil War, a secret society known as the Knights of the Golden Circle, a group that operated in the North to sabotage the Northern efforts, one of them being to steal this gold that was on its way to the U.S. Mint in Philadelphia and then hide it. Why they never went back for it, I don't know. This treasure hunter had been operating or doing his research and looking for this stuff, and he located a site that was on public land in Pennsylvania. And he was operating under the permission of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. It's somewhere along the way, this treasure hunter and the DCNR had a falling out and he follows this up and goes to the FBI. He told them or however he convinced them that took it seriously enough to hire an outside agency to go in and do some very high tech um, survey of property to see if there's any validity to this. And sure enough, this, um, this uh, high-tech equipment revealed that there was a large mass of some kind at this site underground. And then the FBI also using pretty high-tech equipment determined that there was the presence of gold. They end up getting a, a seizure warrant through a federal judge. They get a writ of entry that gives them access to the, to the land. They do a three-day search for this using an excavator and all kinds of techniques, you know, to, to try to locate this stuff. I remember this. Very well documented, I have to say. Uh, very thoroughly documented. And they found nothing. No, no sign of Civil War gold. No sign that anything had been buried there. Now, currently ongoing, there's a lawsuit between this treasure hunter and the FBI. He claims that the did find something and that there's video evidence of this. I don't understand why you, the site survey shows presence of gold, a large mass under the ground, and then they find absolutely nothing. They stole so it. Stay tuned and I'm going to fill you in on this one completely. They stole it. Really, really interesting. They were so excited to find that treasure. 
so that they can put it in their pockets. They probably spit it, split it amongst all of them. Ooh, that's dirty. That is dirty. Talking about we 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 find nothing. Really? How you even find nothing that was clearly there? Y'all wrong. Y'all know what y'all did. Look carefully at this image because this is the most dystopian cyberpunk thing that's happening right now. This post has two hundred. Bro, who leg? Who thick legs is he carrying? Cause it ain't this chick here. Them legs that he holding much thicker, and they coming out of his his stomach. They about thick as his own legs. What in the world am I watching? Why? And why they depicted this man to be eight feet tall? Hundred thousand likes on Facebook. It is obviously AI generated from a bot account, but this stuff is taking over Facebook. And before you say, who cares about Facebook? The answer is exactly twice as many people that care about TikTok. That's 3 billion users a month. And the platform is getting swamped with this stuff. Bizarre AI generated images that always incorporate Jesus somehow. And these accounts literally post every few minutes, just variations of these images until they finally hit one that all of the old people like and comment on. Why? And the bizarre thing is that they have honed in on a few categories of image. Like this is an extremely popular genre where it's a child in a third world country having made a Jesus figure somehow. But if you look at it even briefly, it makes no sense. There are millions of photos that are Jesus as some sort of a sea creature. And you can see where it's just a bot feeding a series of prompts and then just posting all of the results. So like this one didn't get any engagement. If, if you don't see what's going on here, squ squint. It says, close your eyes 70% and see magic. Today's my graduation. Hold on. Oh, I see it. I see Jesus. I see it. I see Jesus. All right, so this is, these are his eyes right here, and that's his eyebrows up here, and that's his his forehead right here, and that's his hair, and this is his nose right here with his mustache, his upper mustache, and this is the rest of his hair and beard somewhere down up in here with all of this there. That's interesting. That's interesting. But a few posts up. Wait, wait, let me squint. Let me see if I can see Jesus with this lady tiger thing that's happening in here. This is weird. I see it. I see it again. He, Jesus is blinking right here on the the folds of her teddy. On the, her teddy. Jesus is blinking at me like this with, with the teddy. And then they got the eye right here and the the the, the, uh, the, the, the tiger right there, the forehead. Then you got the hair and it's coming down all over here mixed with her hair and, 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 and the mountainside over here, the rocks of this waterfall. And then, and then you got his nose around the hill and his upper lip with the mustache and the beard. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. You can see it. There's yet another variation of it. Again, squint your eyes if you don't see what's happening here. And there you go. 45,000 likes. This stuff is spreading. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. I see it. I see it. This time he got his eyes wide open. That's an eye open right there and it's open right there. I see his mustache right there. I see his hair. This is crazy. This is weird. Oh, now that he speak of it, I have seen this online. I have seen this nonsense online. Man, what is going on? Why are they doing this? Uncontrolled across meta. And I think this is fascinating and weird because I think the vast majority of people who liked this photo did not linger on it. They're just scrolling, 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 and they just see this impression of an image. Yeah. It's like this bot is learning how to hack the human brain. What combination of pixels, when glimpsed, will make a person kind of stop and click like? And for some reason, lots of them have flight attendants. And that's the thing. If you told me that somebody was basically running a massive experiment to see what type of imagery the human brain responds to, I could have offered several suggestions based on experience. I would never have arrived at this. I feel like there's an agenda behind those posts. But what is the thing that they're trying to accomplish? By sitting here and fishing for engagement 
so that they can see what it is that they can put out there that will draw the most attention to an audience. So once they figure that out, they can continue to recirculate and regurgitate and repeat that same thing, that same process over and over and over again. It's weird, man, it's weird. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Of course I think the school system is broken. They want a nation full of workers, not free thinkers. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Of course I eat chunks of butter because fat is good for you. Okay, she lost me right there. I ain't saying that fat is bad for you because I would actually agree with her. But I ain't eating no chunk of butter. That's That's nasty. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Of course I don't wear sunscreen because the sun isn't dangerous. Your diet and sunscreen are. I'm a conspiracy. They do say, heck, I mean, they say a lot of us have vitamin D efficiency, but yet they tell us to wear sunscreen. When you go outside, yeah, to some degree you need some sun, but just not too much. You don't need to overexpose yourself to the, to the sun rays. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Of course I think feminism is a scam. It was used to get the woman out of the home, into the workplace, and to destroy the family unit. It was never about our rights. Yo, did you know a fisherman just heard the devil speaking out in the North Sea? Oh, I didn't know. So that. check this out, bro. So out on the cold waves of the North Sea, famous for its extreme weather conditions and storms, a fisherman named Todd Darcy set out in his creaky boat, hoping for a good catch. The night was pitch black and the air had a bone chilling cold. As Todd threw his nets into the water, a weird sound crawled into his ears, a low raspy voice like it came from the deep sea. He strained his ears, thinking it was just the wind playing tricks. But no, the voice spoke words that sent shivers down his spine. Todd, it murmured, I see your dreams. I can make them real. Todd's heart raced. The voice claimed to be the devil, promising power and riches beyond imagination. Fear gripped him, but temptation tugged at his thoughts. Was he dreaming? He slapped himself to wake himself up, but accidentally fell in amongst the harsh, crashing waves. That's when he saw his biggest nightmare. It was the devil himself. Todd happened to have his GoPro recording the whole thing and is allowing us to share the footage, so comment your date of birth and we will send it via DM. Oh, heck no. Nah. That's cap. That is... No cap. We don't want no cap. Oh. You know how I know that's cap. Them boys ain't never ended a story like that. Somebody captured his voice, put it through an AI generator, threw some words in there, and produced that clip, that BS, that nonsense. Because they wouldn't have told us, oh, if you want to know, if you want to see the footage from the GoPro, then, then follow us and, and, and send your name and, and we'll DM it to you. They ain't going to do that. They got a whole podcast. If you want to watch a full episode and everything that's being said on their podcast, you go to their podcast on YouTube. One of the creepiest and weirdest conspiracy theories says that for the last 140 years or so, many of the most powerful men in the world, and it is only men, gather at this secret location to perform a ritual in front of a giant owl statue. The place is called Bohemian Grove, they say, and attendees include almost every former president. It's not a conspiracy. CEOs, any power player in society, they gather here once a year in front of the owl and the bonfire. But the weirdest and most chilling part of all of this is that it's totally true and not controversial. You can go to Wikipedia, just go look up Bohemian Grove. It's a known location. You can go there right now. It's yeah. all fenced off. Yeah. It even includes a photo from one of the gatherings. This is from 1967. There's Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, all just sitting around the table. The ceremony they perform in front of the owl statue is called Cremation of Care, and the powerful people dress up in costumes. The giant owl statue is called the Owl Shrine, and it has speakers and audio equipment inside of it so that it can speak to them in a booming voice. One of the first meetings to discuss the Manhattan Project happened at Bohemian Grove. And yes, it's still in operation. Recent attendees include Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. This, by the way, is why I so strongly dislike fake conspiracy theories. Because you don't need to make things up. Powerful people are weirdos. <laughs> Facts. Facts.
You didn't even have to zoom in on my face. And to prove I'm not full of shit, here we go. 4.78 pounds. 2.2 pounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. $23? They is overpricing that. If they going by the pound. 4.78. 2.2. Let's look at the other one. Yes, please. Maybe that was just an error. Okay, that one says 4.9. 4.9. Okay. Two, Two pounds. It should be half the price of that then, right? Twenty dollars. I mean ten dollars, right? Walmart is getting us. They're screwing us. Right? They're screwing us. Okay, Walmart. Stop screwing people. Y'all yeah, supposed to be the, the discount place, right? So my mother was showing me that she opened a banana that she thinks that these are not real bananas. Look like a real banana to me. We got it from the supermarket. But when she opens it and she breaks it in half, it gets very... Whoa, whoa. Why is it bending like that? It's tough. Not, it's and doesn't breaking. really Yo. break. <laughs> and it, when it pulls, it's like it's glue. It's oh. very tight and doughy. I've Ew, never, I'm not eating that. Never, ever seen a banana like that. I don't know if it's just our banana or if it's this brand from Costco. From Costco, but at the end of the day, it looks very, very fake and Play-Doh-y. Does anyone else know what happened? Can y'all explain? Y'all ever seen a banana like that before? I haven't. If you're telling me this ain't how Hollywood recruits, then you is crazy. They hide the truth in plain sight. Around and looking at her lines one last time. She then faces the casting director again and initiates the scene. Sarah delivers the lines with emotion and emphasis, making sure not to miss any details from the script handed to her. The casting director has complimenting lines, and Sarah does not miss a beat as she seems to perform perfectly. The moment the scene ends, Sarah looks happy with her performance. Kills Still, them. she senses that the casting director does not think she is worth considering. Mm -hmm. Unable to understand why, she even asks if there are any notes to consider for improving her performance. Despite her inquiries, the casting director leaves her with no response. Sarah takes mm. her things with her to the bathroom, immediately melting down in one of the stalls. She throws an aggressive tantrum, bangs the bed with her handbag, mm. and eventually rips through the script in her hand, shouting profanities one last time. So this girl is undercoverly crazy. Every time she fails, she punishes herself by pulling her hair, her hair out or messing herself up some way. Sarah sits on the toilet and collects her breath. Sarah's obsessive habit of playing with her hair overcomes her again. This unhealthy obsession with pulling her hair out also reveals her desire to punish herself in self-disappointment. Seeing her hair urges her to indulge in this unhealthy habit, as she ends her fit by aggressively pulling out several strands of hair from her head. She then gets ready to leave the stall, and opens the door to find that one of the casting directors has been listening in on her tantrum mm. for quite some time now. Creepy. Sarah is taken back to the audition room, where the second casting director confronts her about her tantrum in the bathroom. Sarah initially pleads ignorance, but the director pushes her to be open about her fit. When Sarah admits to pulling her hair out, the casting director finds her even more interesting, demanding to see... There you go, right there. That's how they recruit. You gotta have something with you, mentally, because they know that they can f*** up with pain or whatever, and you're gonna indulge that pain with tolerance, because they know they can f*** you, do whatever they want with you, and then throw you to the side. That's how Hollywood does it. The more up you are, the higher you go up. They can control you. I always thought to be a quality actor, you have to have a, a level of genius to you, right? To come off as so real and authentic and, and just so professional on camera while the cameras are rolling, you have to have some degree of genius about you. But... As this tells it, if you got some some degree of crazy or effed up about you as well, oh, you're perfect for the part. You're real perfect because now we can do something with you. We can keep you in control because if you can't control your situation, you lose control. So you need somebody to control you. Yeah, you're hired. We'll love you for the part. Woo! Holly weird. You guys want a conspiracy theory around this one? Here it is. What did the earthquake register on the Richter scale today? 
4.8. Really? 4.8. Remember those two numbers, 4 and 8. Okay. Because the next question I have is, when is the solar eclipse going to take place? April 8th. 2024 4 8 4 and 8 but I'm sure that numbers don't have meanings this isn't a sign this isn't anything it's just a coincidence possibly but you know what else is a coincidence the fact that I was flying from Atlanta to New York when the earthquake happened. When we touched down in New York, people were talking about the the earthquake because they felt it. There's another coincidence. I was also on the flight on my way back from New York to Atlanta when the eclipse was happening. And a friend pointed that out to me. It's like interesting how you were flying to New York during the earthquake and flying back from New York during the eclipse. Same time, both times. So you miss both of them. Crazy. That's how all everything is. And what I... I can hear people in the comments. Interesting story, bro. Shut up. It is interesting. <laughs> I am now is nothing more than a coincidence theorist. But as always, I want to hear from you. So let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section. And any other theories you may have about the quake or the upcoming solar eclipse or the rest of the year. Whatever. Let me know in the comment section. Share this video with everyone that you know. Uh, coincidence theorist. 911, what are you reporting? Uh, we got someone or something crawling around out here. Did you see what it was? Was it a person or an animal or? I can't tell. All I know is that my central light came on and I just happened to glance and see this thing running across the yard. A uh, good sized man or something. It looks like a man. I don't know what it was. Just that it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was. Whatever it is, it's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. But whatever it was, it was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. Jesus Christ, you better... Sure. See him. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine. I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. Okay, hang on. He's right... Is he in your yard, sir? Yeah, God, he's big. Okay, what's he doing in your yard? He's looking at me. Oh, and the guy is on foot. This... I don't know what... It, it's, it's a big... Real big person. That's all I can say. Okay, but it is a it is a person. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it was a person or somebody really big. What in the world? But he's all in black. He's is he a black male or a white male? Did you actually see whether or was he just wearing black? He's all black and he's big. He is big. <laughs> he's all black and he's big. What in the world this man say? God. Ah. Can we talk about how? People are still falling for Buckingham Palace's game. So Kate made the announcement today that she has cancer. Okay. That's really that lady's business. Like, I think the media frenzy of it all made her come out. I don't know. But for people to say, oh, all y'all that was making jokes and memes should be ashamed of yourself. All those conspiracy theories, y'all should be ashamed of them. As if it wasn't Buckingham Palace itself producing fake photos. Nobody asked them to put fake photos out. That was their idea. They started the conspiracy. No one asked them to stage random paparazzi sightings at a farm. No one asked them to put a mysterious woman in a car that clearly wasn't Kate and say it was Kate. You get what I'm saying? Right. Literally, someone just asked, where's Kate been? And they panicked and they started scrambling and putting out a bunch of fake content. Not to mention when they got caught up Taking photos had Kate take the blame for it. She had to tweet, Oh my god, y'all, I'm just playing around for sure. I don't know what I'm doing now. A week or so later, it's I got cancer, y'all, and I've been in chemo. Mind you, we don't even know what kind of cancer it is, but again, that's that lady's business. But do not fall for Buckingham Palace's games. They made her come out and say cancer, so we all feel bad about ourselves and asking, Where's Kate? When all they had to do was somebody ask, Hey, where's Kate? 
is say, you know what, she's still recovering. We'll let you know when she's available. Mother's Day didn't have to be a picture. You could have put on a statement, hey, it's Kate, I'm still recovering, y'all Y'all be good, y'all have a good Mother's Day. They did all this weird stuff, and now we should feel bad? No, no, don't fall for it. I'm still asking why did they do all that stuff? Why are y'all always trying to cover up and hide and lie? We reacted to those pictures, at least some of the pictures. They came up on our feed, like, what's going on? Why are these photos clearly edited, clearly faked? Why are their hands in places where hands shouldn't be at? What's happening? They did it. They didn't have to put that out there. They could have let this woman recover in peace. If y'all was going to come out and tell us the truth, at some point, why not just tell us the truth in the beginning so that we wouldn't have to come up with these theories about what it is that y'all was showing us? Look, I'm done. That's all I got for y'all today. Leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions down below, and I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. See ya.